Breaking tonight, President Trump close to arriving in Japan as he starts his historic visit to Asia. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. We're keeping an eye on Yokota Air Base in Tokyo, where the President of the United States is due to arrive and address U.S. troops there. We're going to bring that to you when it happens. Also tonight, Congress members Ron DeSantis and Brian Babin are here, as well as Sebastian Gorka and Jason Chaffetz. But first, my opening statement. They lied to us. They said there was nothing to worry about, that the sale of 20 percent of America's uranium to our enemy, Russia, wasn't really a problem. Nothing to look at here, folks. And after the sale, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission even assured Congress and us that Russia couldn't export any raw nuclear fuel from our shores. So what difference does this make? that uranium would leave our shores. I'll tell you what difference it makes. For me, it's personal. You see, in 2012, I was diagnosed with cancer. I didn't talk about it. You didn't know about it. I just did my show every weekend. And in the end, as the chemotherapy treatments progressed, I was on air talking to you without my eyebrows, eyelashes, and wearing a wig. Like so many of us, I was diagnosed and found out I was sick thanks to the advances of nuclear medicine and the medical isotopes used to create it. Those medical isotopes are the key to identifying and treating disease. They are literally life-saving. I know. So why am I telling you this, and why now? Why? Because uranium is key to nuclear imaging. Last week in my open, I told you Russia wanted our uranium so badly that they started a criminal campaign to get ours. And so began the corruption and the bribery that underlay the Uranium One deal, the one where the Clintons walked away with millions and the Russians walked away with 20 percent of America's uranium. The informant who brought the bribery to the attention of the FBI in the criminal case prosecuted by Eric Holder's Justice Department and Rod Rosenstein's Maryland office was gagged so he couldn't tell you what the Russians were doing. And the lie that the uranium wasn't leaving our shores? Reports from the Hill are that when inquiries were made whether our uranium was being shipped to our enemy, Russia, NRC Chairman Gregory Yasko, a former Harry Reid staffer, apparently well-versed in the swamp, said we never issued a license to the Russian firm and no uranium could be exported without it. But hang on, folks. The NRC approved the shipment of uranium from our mines to Canada through a third party. And later, the Obama administration itself allowed it to go to Europe. Rather than give an open license to the Russians, the NRC allowed a trucking firm to circumvent the license requirement and simply transport the uranium to Canada. And no one in Congress even noticed. You know, it all makes sense now. Obama dancing with the devil, so keen on making the Iran deal with our sworn enemy. That Iran deal allowing them to develop the capability to create Mali 99 in their country from uranium and sell it back to us. Mali 99, of course, is the medical ingredient that's used to diagnose heart disease and cancer in over 40 million Americans a year. It cannot be made without uranium. So here's the bottom line. We shouldn't export our weapons-grade uranium to other countries. And I'm not even talking about the criminality and money to the Clintons and their so-called charitable foundation that accompanied the sale of our uranium to Russia so that other countries can then provide us with medical isotopes. We don't need to give billions of dollars to other countries so that they can develop their nuclear programs and then sell it to us at a profit. 
We don't need Russia, Iran, or anyone else in control of our medical testing or imaging. I, for one, don't want to give anyone but Americans the leverage over that. And I got news for you. There is a law called the American Medical Isotopes Production Act that requires that our government support the development in this country of Mali 99 for medical uses. It's time to use our uranium for the development of our medical imaging, for the creation of jobs in our country, to lower health care costs for our working Americans, and not to mention the nuclear security that goes along with it. We don't need to be vulnerable to Russia, Iran, or even North Korea. We don't need them to leverage us by turning off a supply, the development of which we paid for or assisted in the creation of. You know, it's bad enough for people like me who get that cancer diagnosis, who go through the treatment not knowing what's going to happen at the other end. We shouldn't have to deal with the thought that our uranium, our taxpayer dollars, are being used to develop our medical isotopes, our increase or increase our dependency on foreign governments, especially governments that are committed to our destruction. The problem is there's no real production of Mali 99 in the United States. We need our own domestic production, and we need to stop sending weapons-grade uranium to our enemies. You, me, and 40 million other Americans for whom nuclear imaging provides the devastating information or the sweet, precious, life-saving relief shouldn't be held hostage to people who want to kill us. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram, hashtag Judge Janine. And joining me now with reaction to my opening statement and all the breaking news, uh, Doctor of Dental Surgery and Texas Congressman Brian Babin and Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis. All right, guys, thanks for you. thank you both for being here. I'm going to start with Congressman Babin. All right, Congressman, why do, you rely, why do we rely on other countries for the development of Mali 99? Mainly because we have stopped we have stopped manufacturing nuclear weapons because of an agreement we did back in the 80s with the Soviet Union, and so we are no longer creating weapons. And quite frankly, we're dependent upon a lot of nations around the world for our radioisotopes that we that we use. And uh, these radioisotopes are extremely important uh, for the manufacture uh, of these uh, various isotopes that are used in the, in the practice of medicine and diagnosing and treating diseases such as cancer and saving lives. And as you said earlier, there are 40 million procedures a year uh, done with nuclear medicine. And so it's very, very important uh, that we uh, not be uh, dependent upon foreign nations, especially Russia, uh, for these uh, these isotopes. And, and, and Dr. Babin, Congressman Babin, if, if you could tell my viewers, what, what would Mali 99, what is nuclear imaging? When they go for what kind of test, would this be relevant or would this be used? Well, they're, they're, like I said, there are 40 million procedures a year, and many of them are specific for certain organs in the body, whether it's your heart, your thyroid, or, uh, muscular uh, uh, diseases or bones, and, and uh, these isotopes are, are there, many of them are man made. In fact, all of them are man made, uh, and they're very specific for, these, uh, for their task at hand. Uh, and they save lives. I, I, I can't, I can't overemphasize that. Uh, they, they are so much better uh, than, than the old traditional X-rays, uh, our PET scans, our CT scans. I mean, there's, there's so many of these different types of tests that have advanced the, the medical uh, fields uh, so much in, save, in saving American lives. All and right. uh, so we can't be dependent upon uh, other nations to give us this, <laughs> uh, these, these isotopes. All right, and Congressman DeSantis, I'll go to you. Given the corruption uh, case that is underlying uh, that Uranium One deal, and you know the news that's been broken uh, in the last few days about that deal, 
Why would there be an Iranian deal where $150 billion then goes to Iran, where we invest in them to be able to create the medical isotope so we can then buy it back? So we're giving uranium or selling it to Russia. Obama administration approves it. And then we're dealing with Iran, giving them $150 billion so that we can then buy the isotopes from them. And that violates a 2012 law that was actually enacted by Congress to try to address the problem of us having to import this, uh, the uranium underlying these, uh, these tests. And the Iran deal was never passed by Congress. It was never ratified as a treaty. It was basically Obama making an executive agreement, obviously front-loading hundreds of billions of dollars in benefits to a terror-financing state. But he was doing that unilaterally, and you cannot violate existing law. Right. So that's a huge issue in and of itself. And then, oh, by the way, with the Clinton uranium deal, we were told, as you mentioned, Judge, in your open, oh, yeah, so Russia has 20 percent. They're not allowed to export it because they didn't have an exporting license. And while that is technically true, what we've now found out was that that uranium was sent outside the United States. They did it okay. very underhandedly. You know, there were a lot of indirect ways to do it, but that was exported. Congressman, do we know once that stuff was exported and, and they used trucking uh, to get it to Canada, do we know where it went from Canada? And by the way, to my viewers, we're on the screen, uh, we're waiting for the President uh, uh, and Air Force One to land, I believe, and that's why that screen is up. But Congressman DeSantis, do we know that? Well, we, we definitely know that it went to Europe. Uh, we believe it went to Asia, and we're working on trying to figure out whether it did, in fact, end up in the hands of a rogue regime like Iran. We haven't been able to substantiate that yet, but we have some indications that may have happened. We're working on that. Hopefully, we'll be able to substantiate that soon, one way or another. And in that regard, your committee, and we appreciate your coming back on justice, you've indicated that you're starting hearings on this whole thing. You've got some breaking news for us. That informant on that underlying criminal case uh, that was in the Rod Rosenstein's office, Rosenstein, uh, that gag order has been lifted. What do you expect to uh, hear in the next few weeks? So we are getting all of the document. He compiled all kind of documents from his time as an informant. So we're getting all of those documents. We've already gotten leads based on some of the information in there. We're going to be bringing him in within the next couple of weeks. He's going to be interviewed mostly behind the scenes so that we can tease out all the information. And then it's going to require us to, to follow some of these leads. Uh, I think we will eventually do hearings, but I think there's just so much information that we're now going to have access to for the first time in years uh, that's going to take us some time to really go through all that because there's a lot of different moving parts in this a lot mm -hmm. of it's corrupt but there are a bunch of different parts well and and clearly the attorney for the uh, informant who was gagged is calling for a special counsel as is uh, Senator Grassley and I assume you believe that to be the case as well well, if Jeff Sessions has taken the position that he's going to recuse on anything involving the Clintons, then obviously he would not be able to, to handle this. But neither could his deputy Rosenstein for exactly the reason you mentioned. Rosenstein was involved in handling the McKeeran prosecution. And I think there's some questions about how these cases were disposed of. So I think because of Sessions' position, Rosenstein's involvement, I do think it would be appropriate to have a special counsel outside okay. the normal chain. All right. And Congressman Babb and I assume assume that uh, members of Congress are going to be doing everything they can to comply with the Medical Isotopes Act so we can start developing these isotopes and, and the, the key to identifying and treating some major diseases here in the United States? The uh, Department of Energy has already uh, started with millions of dollars worth of grants uh, to various uh, American institutions uh, so that we can begin to do this. Well, but, let's hope uh, so, because I haven't heard of any that are actually developing. Anyway, Congressman yeah. Babin, Congressman DeSantis, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And right. a reminder, we are very close to President Trump arriving in Japan, and you can track it right here on your screen. Meantime, here with more reaction to all of this developing news, former assistant to the president and author of the New York Times bestseller, Defeating Jihad, Dr. Sebastian Gore.
Gorka. All right, Dr. Gorka, thanks for being with us uh, uh, this evening. Look, I, I am very focused right now, not just on uh, the Clintons, the foundation and, and Russia uh, and the Iranian deal, but the impact that it has on ordinary Americans, my viewers out there who have cancer, who go for medical imaging, nuclear imaging, and they have no idea that most of this is being bought from foreign countries. Right. Canada, that right now it's going down in terms of its production, and we don't know where we're getting it in the future. And Barack Obama is sending 150 for the development of a, of a met nuclear uh, uh, imaging in Iran so that we can buy it back. What is going on? Judge Janine, thank you for that incredibly moving and powerful uh, monologue at the beginning of your oh. show. You've you've shed light on a completely new angle of this story because when we hear the words plutonium uranium we think about weapons we think about bombs and of course there never should have been a deal which hillary clinton as secretary of state approved to sell any of our uranium to russia because of the weapons implications because of russia's relations to countries like north korea uh, you can but, see air but, force one on the screen here sorry uh, yeah, uh dr gorka i see it you oh you can see it too okay yeah. air force one arriving in japan historic trip for the president, it will be the longest trip for the president leaving the United States since he came into office. And uh, all right, Dr. Gorka, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just you've illuminated another aspect completely. We should be self-sufficient when, when this is a life and death matter. Right. The experience you went through, all the people getting chemotherapy right now, we shouldn't have to be bringing, we shouldn't be selling that to another nation and then having to buy it back. So it's, it's outrageous when it comes to national security and it's outrageous when it comes to the health of suffering Americans. And, you know, the amazing thing is that there is a mandate for the United States to actually create its own development, and it's just not happening. You know, that there is a law that requires it. But l let me move on here. With respect to uh, the uranium deal and the Department of Justice, and there is a call for a special counsel. And, you know, this week I was at the White House and I spoke to the president and said that we absolutely have to investigate uranium one, the sale of our uranium to Russia, the Clinton Foundation, the alleged pay for play. Uh, do you hear anything about whether or anything is going to be happening? Well, look, given what the president said uh, yesterday and the day before, something clearly will happen. He has sent a very delicate but very clear message to the attorney general. We need somebody to investigate all these massively important scandals, but somebody who is unconnected. It can't be Rod Rosenstein, can't be anybody on the seventh floor of the FBI, can't be anybody in the leadership of the GO DOJ that worked for Obama. We need to dig down. We need to go to a field office of the FBI out in Texas. We need to go to an RA out in Virginia, pick clean people who have no connections to any of these deals and let them investigate them. And wherever the shoe falls, the people must pay the penalty because this is serious felonious activity, national security, classified information and corruption at the highest levels of government. And, and you know, Dr. Gorka, the interesting thing is it's not just because they were in the Obama administration. I mean, this particular case and, and uh, with the under Underlying bribery and corruption uh, that, that uh, preceded the uranium one sale to Russia, it was actually handled in Rod Rosenstein's yes. office. So right. it's not like, oh, this is just part of a. But no, these are the same players. Mueller is investigating Russia, and he was in charge of the FBI at the time this this deal went down. Right. This is this is incestuous at best. It, it is. And, and we have to be not only a nation of the rule of law, we have to look as if it must have also it must smack as if things are going by the book, not just actually going by the book. And yeah. when Rod Rosenstein is in that position, he must not be involved. He must recuse himself. Amazing stuff from our Department of Justice. All right, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, as always, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Judge. All right. And our live breaking coverage of President and Trump's arrival in Tokyo continues here in just a moment. Very exciting times. Don't go away.